Talks are eating up for Honda to potentially join NASCAR, and Noah Grayson has sponsors. What's going on, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. We got to NASCAR and other motorsports stories discussed here today on the channel. Let's go ahead and just show straight those really, really quickly. We're first going to take a look at a ton of paint schemes that have been revealed over the course of the last couple of days. Let's go ahead and just jump straight into it. The first paint scheme we're taking a look at is Corey LaJoy's 2024 Chili Scheme that we'll see in the Daytona 500. I like the scheme quite a bit, but I'm not a big fan of the QR codes. I have never really been a big fan of QR codes on these cars. They need to be removed. Other than that, I think it is a solid paint scheme. The next paint scheme we're taking a look at is BJ McLeod's 2024 Kale Scheme that we'll see at Daytona in the Xfinity Series. The scheme is alright in my opinion. Not as a big fan of the color, but I'm happy to see BJ McLeod does have a sponsor. The next paint scheme we're taking a look at is Tyler Reddick's 2024 Nasty B scheme that we'll see in the Daytona 500. The scheme is very interesting. It's a different color for Monster Energy especially. I think it's decent, but it's not absolutely amazing in my honest opinion. The next paint scheme we're taking a look at is Blaine Perkins' 2024 Auto Parkit scheme. Not much to say about it. It's kind of similar to the other Auto Parkit schemes that we've seen from Lawless Allen and also, of course, Blaine Perkins in the past. It's okay, but nothing special. The next paint scheme we're taking a look at is Riley Herb's 2024 Monster Energy Scheme that we'll see in the Daytona 500. This looks good in my opinion. I'm always a big fan of Monster Energy Schemes, the regular ones. This looks solid. Hopefully you can have a good run in the Daytona 500 with this paint scheme. The next paint scheme we're taking a look at is Justin Haley's 2024 FOE Scheme. This looks like a throwback to Dale Earnhardt. Honestly, it's kind of blank. It's decent. It's nothing special. I do like some of the things they've done with the scheme, but overall, I'm not the biggest fan of everything about the scheme, in my honest opinion. And the final paint scheme we're taking a look at is Ben Rose 2024 Ranch Fuel Scheme that we'll see at Daytona this weekend, tomorrow night, as a matter of fact. This is okay, in my opinion. It's pretty good at, in some areas. It's not amazing. Thorsport doesn't always do the greatest job with their design of paint schemes. But overall, it's decent. Hopefully, Ben Rhodes can have a good run with this scheme at Daytona. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Creed. As it was announced yesterday that Creed, or Tuesday or Wednesday, that Creed will sponsor Legacy Motor Club in the Daytona 500. Of course, will sponsor Jimmy Johnson. Now, Jimmy Johnson does tomorrow tonight have to qualify his way into the Daytona 500, but Creed has been very popular. Meme as a recently one of the more popular bands in the 90s. It's really cool to see them getting the chance and opportunity to work with Legacy Motor Club this year. I would imagine if they don't make the 500, they might transition over maybe Eric Jones or John Hunter Nemechek, considering both those drivers are, in fact, locked into the Daytona 500. It's good to see, though, that a company like that is working, or a team and a band is working with that organization this season. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Menards. As it was announced yesterday that Menards will be returning to Thor Sport in 2024. Continuing the longest relationship for a sponsor to driver in history as Menards has been sponsoring Matt Crafton for about two, a little over two decades. This is really great to see. Menards has had a big partnership with Thor Sport Racing for a very, very long time. And they've been sponsoring 88 cars since about 2005 or 2006. And it's good to see that Menards will continue that partnership with Matt Crafton in 2024. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Shane Van Gisbergen. As Shane Van Gisbergen has another new sponsor and it's called Safety Culture. I believe Safety Culture might have worked with him in the Supercar series, but it's really cool to see that he'll be bringing companies like Quad Block and Safety Culture and also likely potentially Red Bull as well into NASCAR, which Red Bull, of course, has not sponsored a NASCAR Cup Series car since 2011. I think this is a really big deal for Shane Van Gisbergen to have another sponsor working with him in 2024. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Boot Barn. As it was announced yesterday, the Boot Barn has officially signed with Richard Childress Racing. They'll be an associate sponsor all year for Austin Dillon in 2024. The last couple of years, Boot Barn have been associated with Farmer Motorsports, so it's unclear if they're going to be staying with Farmer Motorsports in 2024. But Boot Barn, pretty cool to see them get a chance and opportunity to once again work with RCR in 2024. A great team to work with. I've been always a big fan of them. Hopefully, we'll see him have a really good run, and we'll see if with the sponsorship, maybe Austin Dillon can get some.
some luck and some good charm and can run really, really well with that sponsorship and funding in 2024. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Nick Lights. As it was announced yesterday, that Nick Lights will drive the 92 for DGEM Racing at Atlanta Motor Speedway next week. Nick Lights has made some select starts in the truck series with Ray and Brothers and other organizations in the Xfinity series as well. Is probably getting the best opportunity he's had in his NASCAR career up to this point. I don't expect Nick Lights to set the world on fire with DGM Racing in 2024, but I think that it's a good opportunity for him. I think he's going to make the most of it. I'm excited to see what he can do. And hopefully Nick may end up making the show because I think the 92 car is going to need to make it on owner's points this year. They don't really have a ton of owner's points for the 92 car currently at the moment. But like I said, I'm very happy seeing Nick Lights is getting a chance and opportunity to be with DGM Racing this upcoming season. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Ryan Huff. As it was announced yesterday that Ryan Huff will drive the 36 for Huff Motorsports in the Truck Series race tomorrow night at Daytona International Speedway. Ryan Huff, I think, has made a couple select Truck Series starts in the past and has been in ARCA for a very, very long time running his own equipment. I do believe that Ryan Huff has an old KBM Toyota from back, I think, in 2021 or 22 that he's working with in this event. Now, Ryan Huff does have to qualify in on time on owner's points, but I think he's got a really good chance and opportunity to do that this season. He is a good enough talent. He can do pretty good, and we'll see if Ryan Huff can end up making the show. Again, great opportunity. Hopefully does good enough and ends up making the show this year and gets into the Daytona Truck Series race because it would be the best opportunity he's had in a very long time. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Clutch Vodka. As it was announced on Wednesday that Clutch Vodka will sponsor Haley Deegan for five races in 2024, including in the opening race at Daytona. This is going to be the next new sponsor that Haley Deegan has had. She's already been announced that Viva Airbox is going to be working with her and a couple other companies, including potentially even Monster Energy, are going to sponsor her throughout the year. This is a big year for Haley Dean because there's a lot of hype around here. Well, still some hype to this day. But also, she's kind of underwhelmed in the Craftsman Truck Series over the course of the last couple of years. Well, one thing about Haley Deegan is she does have a lot of fans that do support her, and also she's pretty easy to pick up sponsorship and funding. So it's pretty awesome to see the Clutch Vodka is coming in and working with Haley Deegan in 2024. The other four races have not been announced at this point to my understanding, but I'm glad to see that a company like Clutch Vodka will be working with Haley Deegan in the 2024 NASCAR season in the Xfinity Series with AM Racing. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Garrett Smithley. As it was announced yesterday that Garrett Smithley will drive the six for JD Motorsports in four races in 2024. He'll race at Daytona this weekend, he'll race at Atlanta next week, then he'll race at Las Vegas, and then he'll race at Phoenix, confirming as of now he'll run the first four races in 2024. From my understanding, JD Motorsports is not planning to run a six car on a full-time basis this year, and they're going to put most of their focus in the number four car. But I'm really glad that Garrett Smithley is getting another chance and opportunity with JD Motorsports because Garrett Smithley has driven for JD Motorsports many times in the past. He hasn't ran absolutely amazing with the team, but he hasn't ran completely awful either. Look, let's be honest, the Xfinity Series is a lot more front-heavy this year as so many smaller teams like JD Motorsports that are not as funded and don't have the big funding like with the Cup teams, they're not going to be as strong as other organizations. So nonetheless, I'm really glad to see that he's getting the chance and opportunity to work with JD Motorsports once again, and I really hope he can make the best of it because it is a very good and solid opportunity for him going into this year. Glad to see him getting the opportunity chance to work with JD Motorsports again in 2024. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Jimmy Johnson. Now, Jimmy Johnson was being interviewed by Media Days yesterday, and he says he is not expected to run any more Cup Series races in 2024 than the races he currently plans. Jimmy Johnson is going to run nine NASCAR Cup Series races with his own organization, Legacy Motor Club, in 2024, including in the Daytona 500, which, of course, like I've already mentioned, he has to qualify for this year's Daytona 500 and on time and speed. 
I expect that Jimmy Johnson will have a very solid chance and opportunity to do this and make it into tonight. I think he's going to be his biggest competition is J.J. Yilly, who we'll talk about a little bit later in this episode. Obviously, Toyota struggled in qualifying for the Daytona 500, which hurt Jimmy Johnson's chances. But again, we know Jimmy's going to be running, both. I think, both Phoenix races maybe, or he's going to run Vegas. I think he's going to run Phoenix at the end of the year. He's going to run, I think, a couple of the races too, not the Chicago Street Course, <coughs> unfortunately. But he's running some big races like Dover. We know how strong Jimmy Johnson has been at Dover historically. I expect Jimmy Johnson to have a very good chance and opportunity here to be very, very competitive in some of these races. Again, he has to make it in later tonight, but I think he does have a very solid and a great opportunity and a great chance to make it into this year's Daytona 500 and make it into all the other races throughout the 2024 season. I'm glad to see him get the chance here, and we'll see if Jimmy Johnson can make it into the race this year. If not, he's going to have eight other tries, and more than likely he won't fail any of those races, considering I don't expect any more than 40 entries to show up in every race except in the Daytona 500. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Kyle Larson. As it was announced yesterday and reported by Adam Cern that Kyle Larson has signed an endorsement deal with Prime Hydrate. He is the first driver or race car driver, I believe, in the world that has now signed with Prime. For those who don't know what Prime is, Prime is one of the biggest hydration and energy drink companies in the world currently at the moment. It is owned by KSI, who's one of the biggest YouTubers, and Logan Paul, part of the WWE, and also another big YouTuber's role and runs the Impulsive Podcast. This is not the first time that Prime has been involved in NASCAR back in 2022, I believe. I think Prime sponsored Timmy Hill and the number 13 car for NBA Motorsports at Charlotte Motor Speedway. But to see that Kyle Larson has officially become a Prime athlete, I think is absolutely huge. We've seen Holland get part of that group and Patrick Mahomes, and they've had big years. So this could lead to Kyle Larson with that prime luck. This could lead Kyle Larson to having a very strong and a great season with Hendrick Motorsports. He's looking to get his second championship this year in 2024. And this is the biggest endorsement of the deal that Kyle Larson has had since getting back into the sport in 2021. I'm very excited about this. I'm really glad to see that Kyle Larson will be working with Prime this year. I know there's been some controversy around KSI as of late, but still I think it's really huge to see that Kyle Larson is working with a big company like Prime, which of course is one of the biggest hydration companies out there currently at the moment. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Colby Howard. As it was announced yesterday that Colby Howard will drive the one truck for Tricon Garage at Atlanta Motor Speedway next week. We've all been kind of wondering what Colby Howard was going to be doing for the 2024 season. But now we know he's make, probably making some select starts with Tricon Garage. Which this will potentially be the best opportunity that Colby Howard has had. Over the last couple of years, he's been a journeyman driver in the truck series. He's basically driven for teams like CR7 Motorsports, and he did not have a great year with that team last year. He also ran a lot of the year with JD Motorsports back in 2020, and honestly, it wasn't the most impressive run with the team. And then, of course, he did have his run with McAnally Hogeman, which he did have some solid performances at times, but was outclassed by his teammates that ran there, including Derek Krauss. So this is a great opportunity for him, obviously, a super speedway like track. He's, of course, I think in a good position in the owner's point, so he won't have to worry about that. But again, I think this is a very good opportunity for him, and I really hope he can end up making the show this year in 2024 and with Tricon Garage at Atlanta next week. We're also expecting other drivers potentially like Bubba Walls to get behind the wheel of this seat. We do know that William Swalch is going to drive nine races in this truck, but we are likely potentially also going to see at some point Bubba Wallace, Christopher Bell, maybe some other drivers get behind the wheel of the one truck throughout the 2024 NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series season. And honestly, I'm really happy to see that he's getting back behind the wheel of the seat. And now we're going ahead to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about David Malukas. As yesterday, David Malukas underwent surgery for a fracture or something like that. And it expected that Dave Malukas is going to miss the start of the IndyCar season. He's expected to miss the St. Pete Grand Prix, which is about three weeks from now. And I think he's expected to miss the next race after that. Now, why is he expected to miss? Well, according to reports from Aaron McLaren, basically the recovery time is going to take around six to eight weeks. And, even, and like I mentioned, the Grand Prix St. Pete is at the end of this month. 
So they basically have to get this, basically want him to recover before he does get back behind the wheel. It's a shame because David Malukas, in my opinion, absolutely is someone who's got a lot of hype going into the IndyCar season. And he's been, was expected to be a championship threat and contender. He's still got time to turn it around in the second half of the year because especially with the type of track we're going to be at the end of the year, that could really help him. But I think that David Malukas is going to be in no contention to win the championship now, unfortunately. Now, I do expect they will get his stuff together, and I think he will still run really, really good with the team by the end of the season. But like I said, I'm very happy to see that David Malukas, is, at least the surgery, did go very, very well. I'm wishing for a lucky and speedy recovery for him, and hopefully we'll see him back behind the wheel of a car at some point this year. We'll see what he ends up doing, and we'll see if, when the recovery happens for him going into 2024. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about the Rookie of the Year battle for 2024. As the people that will be competing for the Rookie of the Year battle in 2024 have been officially announced. Let's go step by step. First, with the Cup Series. There's four drivers who bet part of the Rookie of the Year battle. There'll be Josh Berry who'll be driving a four car for Stuart Haas Racing. Kaz Grohl will be driving a 15 for Rick War Racing. Zane Smith will be driving a 71 for Spire with assistance from Trackhouse Racing. And Carson Ospar driving a 77 car for Spire Motorsports. For the Xfinity Series, you've got five drivers competing for the Rookie of the Year. You've got Dawson Cram driving the four for JD Motorsports. You've got Haley Dean driving the 15 car for AM Racing. You've got Leland Honeyman Jr. driving the 42 car for Young's Motorsports. He moves up to the Xfinity Series this season. You've got Jesse Love driving the two car for Richard Childress Racing. And you've got Shane Van Gisbergen driving the number 97 car for Call with assistance from Trackhouse Racing. And then you have the Truck Series, which is only three. You have Connor Jones driving a 66 part-time for Thor Sport Racing. You have Thab Moffa driving a 46 truck for Faction 46. And you have Lane Riggs driving a 38 truck for Front Row Motorsports. So let's go through all series who I think is going to win the Rookie of the Year. For the Cup Series, I'm giving the advantage to Josh Berry. And here's why I'm giving it to Josh Berry. Josh Berry is going to be in the four car. And while Stuart Haas Racing has completely struggled in recent years and seasons, this still is going to be the four car with Rodney Childers. Kaz Grohl is not running the full season, though I think he'll be good on road courses. Zay Smith, I expect to be his biggest threat and competitor throughout the year. But I don't think Spire Motorsports is going to get to that level of the four car. And Carson Osborne, I think, is getting a little bit overhyped going into the season because a lot of drivers in the industry are not big fans of Carson Hosobar. So I don't expect Carson Osborne to win the Rookie of the Year. So I think Josh Berry wins it in, in Cup. For the Xfinity Series, I think you have to look at two drivers. Jesse Love and Shane Van Gisbergen are 100% the front runners. I am going to give the advantage to Shane Van Gisbergen, however. A lot of people are hyping up Jesse Love. I don't think Jesse Love is going to have as good of a year as people are making him out to be. Yes, he's going to be working with Danny Sockman, who is an excellent and a great crew chief, but I don't think that Danny Sockman is going to lead uh, him to just have a great season. So I think Shane Van Gisbergen, who I think is going to win multiple races throughout the year, I think he's going to win the Rookie of the Year. And for the Truck Series, I think this is a no-brainer, Lane Riggs. Lane Riggs is going to be the 38 truck for Front Row Motorsports. This is one of the best trucks in the field every single year and season. And I think that you will see him have a fantastic and a great year in the Truck Series with him getting multiple wins. Connor Jones didn't even score a single top 10 finish. His be- fact, his best finish last year was 15th. And then Thad Moffitt's going to be Faction 46, who's going to have a lot of growing pains. Again, for Xfinity, also Haley Deegan. I don't expect her to really do much this year in contention to that. So I think, again, Cup, Josh Berry, Xfinity's going to be Shane Van Gisbergen, and the Truck Series, I think, is going to be Lane Race. I think it's pretty easy going to be them for 2024. I might end up being wrong, and combo if you think I'm wrong on that, but I do believe that is going to be who ends up winning the Rookie of the Year battle in 2024. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Fox. As it was poured by Marshall Pro from Racer.com that Fox has emerged as a contender for the NTT IndyCar rights for 2025. Currently, TV negotiations are going on for the IndyCar series at this point, and there is a chance that we could potentially see a brand like NBC continue working with the NTT IndyCar series in 2025. But again, the TV deal has to be done by the end of June, if I'm not mistaken. Now, hearing that Fox might be in the running to pick up the rights for the IndyCar deal going into the future is a little bit disappointing, and here's why. 
If you saw the Fox broadcast last night, you probably saw not a very, very good broadcast. One thing that NBC and IndyCar have done a really good job doing together is they've put on amazing and fantastic and great broadcasts. And I don't believe that if IndyCar went to Fox, I think all that quality of broadcasting would go down the gutter. They probably bring the cartoon characters out to play. I'll say the one thing about Fox's NASCAR coverage is the booth is probably the best thing they've got going for them currently at the moment. But everything else surrounding Fox is just not good in my opinion. So I personally do not believe that Fox is going to just do an amazing job. I just don't think things are going to go out really, really well for them. And I think it's going to be a pretty big struggle for them if IndyCar does go there. And I think it will hurt IndyCar in a pretty big way. Plus, I would imagine the IndyCar races are going to go to FS1, and cable is dying at least in a little bit of alarming rate. Yes, I know they announced a little streaming package that's going to be coming into play relatively soon. But in general, I'm just not a big fan of this move, and I don't like seeing the fact that Fox could end up picking the right, up the rights for the IndyCar deal going into the not-so-distant future. And now we're going to go ahead jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about the Music City Grand Prix. As it was announced yesterday that the Music City Grand Prix will be moving from the National Street Course to National Super Speedway, meaning that the Oval will be hosting a season finale race for the first time since 2014 when Auto Club hosted the season finale. The reason for this sudden move and change is because of the fact of the Titans construction that is going on at this moment. That is a big reason why this is happening, why the Mew City Grand Prix is moving to the National Super Speedway, which again, is also be the first time the National Super Speedway has hosted an IndyCar race since 2008 when Scott Dixon was the last winner at that track. Now, this seems like it's not going to be fully temporary just for this year. It sounds like because it's going to take a lot longer and it's kind of unknown when the NFL schedules are going to be released and the Titans construction has been taking a lot longer than anticipated, they may take at least two or three years to get the construction completely done, which means there's a really good chance that the Music City Grand Prix is going to, in fact, end up staying in the national area in the National Super Speedway. It's bad for branding and, and basically sponsorship and some things, but it's good for the racing fan because this means that I think six of the last seven or eight IndyCar races are going to be on ovals. And I believe it's going to be the most ovals on the IndyCar schedule since I think 2011 or 2012, which is absolutely huge for IndyCar. You want a balance of races, and I think having a ton of ovals on the schedule does not hurt the IndyCar series. So I think this is a great move as much as it does suck to see the circumstances of how it ended up happening. I think it's a very good and great move for the series overall to have the Music City Grand Prix at the National Super Speedway. Because personally, I think it's going to be a better move for IndyCar. And I think we'll see some pretty solid and good racing, especially in National, which I think they'll do a good enough job to try to get both groups working for this event. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about J.J. Yealy. As it was officially confirmed yesterday that J.J. Yealy will drive the 44 car for NY Racing in the Daytona 500. Originally, we all thought that Greg Biffle was potentially going to be the driver of the seat for the 44 car, but that was confirmed recently that it was not going to be the case because Greg Biffle is still waiting to get paid by NY Racing, meaning the contract obligations did not go through very quickly. A coroner reports, and this was mentioned on the broadcast last night as well, this deal had just gotten done basically in the last couple of days. But having Jay Zilli drive for NY Racing, which of course he has driven for NY Racing in the past, I think he drove for them back in 2018 with the Steakhouse sponsorship, I believe. So he has driven for NY Racing in the past. This is not the first time he's gone behind the wheel of an NY Racing seat. I do expect that they're going to have a hard time making it in tonight because obviously this is the first time they've ran in two years. Last time, like I mentioned, Greg Biffle got behind the wheel. And obviously, J.J. Yealy is experienced at these types of tracks. But the question is going to be, can they make it in later tonight? Because they're going to need some good mojo to have a really good chance and opportunity to make it in tonight. We've seen some crazier things happen. Remember, the money team was able to make it in last year over like Chandler Smith and Call of Racing. So maybe they'll get very, very lucky and they'll get into the show. But honestly, if you want my early expectations, I don't really know if they're going to make it in. We'll have to wait and see what happens in regards to that and see if they do, in fact, end up making it into the show. But right now, I'm not exactly expecting them to make it into the main event. But I am very happy to see 
that they'll be working and getting back behind the wheel. Hopefully, Jay Gilly can have a really solid and strong year this year, depending on how many races they run, because the number of races they're planning to run this year is not clear at this current moment. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about 3G. As it was officially confirmed on Wednesday morning that 3G will be back at Richard Childress Racing this year in 2024. And they will continue their sponsorship with Kyle Busch in the 2024 season. There was a lot of concerns that 3 g when it was announced that Zone was going to be coming in to sponsor Kyle Busch for a majority of the year. It was unclear if 3 g was going to be back with Kyle Busch and Richard Childress Racing for 2024. But basically the same day after that, basically RCR kind of confirmed that we're not done working with Kyle Busch this year. We're still in talks, conversations to potentially make this move and make it work. And now 3 g is going to be coming into play, like I said, to work with Kyle Busch again this year. Again, the number of primary sponsorships has not been announced and that has not made, been made fully clear at this particular moment. But I am very happy to see that 3 g is back in the sport and working with RCR. And now this confirms that Kyle Cush is still going to be a thing. And also this confirms that we'll see Kyle Bush have all the party sponsors for this year. He's basically got Zone, which is basically nicotine. He's got 3 g which is basically weed. And then, of course, he's got basically bourbon as a sponsor. So he's getting all these party brands. Hey, just get all the other major party brands into play and all the other adult sponsors into play. And I think we'll be in very solid and really, really good shape. Again, though, it's awesome to see that 3 g is once again working with Kyle Busch for the 2024 season. And I will see how many races they do officially sponsor this upcoming season. But like I said, I'm again, I'm just very happy to see that 3 g is back at Richard Childress Racing for the 2024 calendar year. And I'm looking forward to see them working with Kyle Busch once again in the 2000 24 NASCAR Cup Series season. I can't wait for the sponsorship and basically the reveal of the paint scheme going forward. But again, like I said, I'm very happy to see the three sheet is once again working with Kyle Busch in the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season. And now we're going to hedge on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about NASCAR full speed. Now, during Daytona 500 Media Days yesterday, Steve Feltz went on and spoke about the potential of NASCAR full speed having a second season. And according to Steve Feltz, it sounds like they're getting very, very close to having a season two. And it sounds like the green light might be given in the not so distant future for season two of NASCAR full speed. This is absolutely huge. If you watch the first season of NASCAR Full Speed, which focused on around six or seven or nine drivers in the field, drivers like Bubba Wallace, Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson, William Byron, and Ryan Blaney, were some of the main focus, even Denny Hamlin, who was the star of this show. This show in season one was a five-episode series that was extremely popular with the fans. And I've noticed that there have been a lot of new fans coming in because of NASCAR Full Speed, who even want to understand and learn about the sport in a lot bigger way. And I think having a second season would absolutely be huge for NASCAR itself. Because like I've already kind of talked about this in said, you got to have something there to basically keep going. And especially with how much success season one had, you knew there was going to be a really strong chance an amazing and great possibility that we were going to see a second season of NASCAR Full Speed coming into play. So like I said, I'm extremely happy about this. And again, I'm, I'm just glad to see that they are in talks and major conversations to bring a second season back. I think if they continue doing this, I think this could grow to sport to another level. We've seen how Dry to Survive grew Formula 1. There's also a lot of talk about Days of Thunder coming back, which I think would absolutely be huge for a second Days of Thunder movie, which I thought Days of Thunder was a really, really great film. And in general, just having a potential talk of getting a second season of NASCAR full speed would not only be amazing for the sport, but would be absolutely huge getting to that younger demographic of fans, which NASCAR is currently chasing at this moment, which they need to continue chasing if they want to continue growing. So nonetheless, I'm really excited about this. And again, I think it's just so phenomenal and incredible to see that season two of NASCAR Full Speed, it might be on the way in the not so distant future. And I really hope it does come out because I do believe that NASCAR Full Speed, the second season of that, would be very successful and great for the sport. So I'm happy about this. And like I said, glad to see that there is a second season of NASCAR Full Speed currently on the way. I really hope it does, in fact, end up being successful when it does officially come out. 
And now we're going ahead to move on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Front Row Motorsports. Now it was reported by Couch Racer Shop on Twitter that according to them, there's a rumor starting to circulate that Front Row Motorsports might be becoming a Tier 1 Ford team in the not so distant future. According to them, rumors are circulating that Front Row could become a Tier 1 Ford team as early as 2025. Obviously, last night was a huge night for Front Row Motorsports. They were able to start on the front row for the Daytona 500 with Michael McDowell, and we've been seeing the rise of Front Row Motorsports over the course of the last decade or last 10 to 15 years. I remember all the way back in 2013 when they were kind of a mid-pack team, and they basically passed Carl Leverts at the end of that event at Talladega and were able to win. And they've been getting faster faster on a year-by-year basis. They've been making a lot of investments. They brought a lot of older people from Joe Gibbs Racing into their group and investment, and now you have them potentially jumping up into the key teams going into 2025. It also helps with the fact that they have an alliance with Team Pensy going into this year, which I think is really going to help them in a big way. Because it also means there might be an organization, we'll talk about in a little bit, that might be getting out of Ford by the end of this year. I think you all kind of can get an idea of what that team could end up being. But having potentially Front Row Motorsports jump far from a team that a few years ago, or even 10 years ago, was down in like tier number two and tier number three, and jumping up into tier number one, I think is absolutely huge for an organization like Front Row Motorsports. I think it's big for the team, which means that they're going to have a lot more higher expectations, and they're not going to be one of these underdog teams. But they've had one of the biggest rises of organizations, slow climbing rises as an organization. And to see that they potentially could be a tier one key team is absolutely huge. What if they got someone to be into that organization like a Carl Lewis, perhaps, or someone to bring in that could definitely help with the team. If maybe they got like a Matt DeVedetto, can you help work their program? That'd be pretty cool too. But like I've mentioned already said, a tier one program like Front Row and seeing them potentially be a top team in the not so distant future, I think would not only be really huge for an organization like Front Row, but I think in general, it would be really, really huge for the sport to have another organization being competitive. And it just shows that this next-gen car is helping organizations like Front Row get faster and faster. Last year, statistically, Front Row Motorsports had their best year as an organization, and they are just continuing to climb that ladder on a year-by-year basis. Remember, a few years ago, I wouldn't even rank them as a top-10 team. They're going into this year as one of the lower top-10 teams. Maybe by the end of this year, especially how they've started by getting on the front row for the Daytona 500 with Joey Logano and Michael McDowell, of course, I believe that this team could potentially, in the not so distant future, jump into that Tier 1 statistics, which I think would be really awesome and amazing for the sport if that did, in fact, end up happening. We'll see how things end up going for Front Row if they truly do become a Tier 1 team going into 2025. But like I said, man, they've made a lot of major moves with that organization. They brought a lot of key personnel over there, and I think it's a huge reason. And you look at their truck program as well. They've got a great truck program this year. They've got Lane Riggs driving their truck full-time, and there's a lot of hype surrounding Lane Riggs going into the Truck Series season. And I think some of that hype from the Truck Series, a lot of that move from the Truck Series, is starting to translate and move into their Cup Series program program over there and I think a lot of success is happening because of that so very happy about this front row and if it is true that they are going to become a tier one key forward partner team I think that they're going to be in a really good position going forward as a manufacturer for Ford especially but as an organization because remember a few years ago when there's a lot of rumors of 2311 in front row we're going to partner up together that was going to be a big way for Kurt Busch to get a chance and opportunity to be with 2311 at the time I think this is a fantastic move if it does end up happening and I'm glad to see that they could become a key four team by the 2025 season. And now we're going to head jump on to the first of two major stories in today's episode as we're talking about Noah Gregson. Now yesterday, or a couple days ago, I talked about the fact that Noah Gregson may in fact officially have some new sponsors or old sponsors working with him in 2024. And we officially got confirmation on Wednesday morning, right after the video I did on it went live, that Noah Gregson in fact does have sponsorship for 2024. Ranger Boats, Black Rifle Coffee, True Timber, and Winchester have joined the sponsor Noah Gregson 
for the 2024 season. When we take a look at the paint scheme, this looks very similar to his Black Rifle Coffee car and Basswood Shops car that he had in the Xfinity Series in 2022 and also I believe in 2021 and also in 2020. So it's really good to see that Noah Grayson is bringing some sponsors back for the 2024 calendar season. Noah Grayson has absolutely deserved a second chance, and we all were kind of wondering because of what happened last year. We were all kind of wondering when he went over to Super Haas Racing, would some of these companies that have worked with Noah Grayson in the past, were they going to come back and work with him in 2024? But we now know 100% for sure that is going to be the case. And this is a really good opportunity for Noah Grayson. He's got a fresh start over there at Stuber Haas Racing going into the 2024 season. And I think that could lead Noah Grayson having overall an amazing and a great year with that safe char. But we do have to be realistic about Noah Gregson. Stuber Haas Racing does, is not this organization that is a top tier team anymore. Their team is probably in the second tier of Ford, even though they are top tier one Ford team. They're still not one of those big organizations or top dog organizations anymore. They lost Kevin Harvick. They lost Eric Almirola. They lost that Smithfield funding. They lost Bush funding. But at least for Noah Grayson's sake, they got at least a little bit of funding back for Noah Grayson going into this season, which again, I think is phenomenal and great for the sport to see that Noah Grayson is getting the funding and sponsorship back. Now, when we look at realistic expectations to Noah Gregson, I think ultimately the goal is to finish in the top 30 in the standings or maybe even the top 25 in the standings. I know that's kind of a little bit low expectations. I know Noah wants to lead. He said this yesterday during media days that he wants to lead Stuart Haas Racing to be in a championship caliber organization once again. But to be honest with you, I just don't know if that is going to end up happening. I think Noah is a talented driver. But we look back at last year, right? Noah Gregson had an awful season in 2023. He basically only had two top 20 finishes in the 21 races he did run. And then, of course, he got suspended near the end of the year last year and lost his ride eventually to John Hunter Nemechek, which, let's be for real, he was going to lose his ride with Legacy Motor Club anyways because Toyota, from what we understand, did not really want to work with Noah Grace, and I think that he was the scapegoat. But going back to the whole situation... I do believe that Noah Grayson has deserved a second chance to be with Stuart Haas Racing, and I believe that he did not deserve to be suspended by NASCAR. I think it got blown way out of portion. If Legacy wanted to suspend it for him, that's up to their discretion. But in my personal opinion, I think that NASCAR jumped the line and jumped the gun a little bit of going over and suspending Noah Gregson. But again, it is an amazing opportunity for Noah and maybe long term because it is a multi-year contract. I know the contracts can easily be broken, but I do believe that Noah Gregson can definitely have a very solid year with SHR. If he gets like 10, 5 or 10 top 10s, it'd be an amazing year for Noah. But I expect Noah Grace to maybe get a couple top 10s throughout the season. And in general, it's just phenomenal and great to see that Noah Grayson does have some sponsorship for the 2024 season. I really hope he can make the best of it because if he can, I think he'll be a good driver for the sport. And I think he'll do some great things with Stuart Haas Racing this year. And again, just having some sponsors and funding working with him in 2024, I think is just great for him. So like I said, just really happy and glad to see that Noah Grayson is bringing back some old sponsors that used to work with him in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, bringing him up to the Cup Series, and also they kind of work with him last year in Cup Legacy. Glad to see Noah Grayson does, in fact, have some sponsorship for the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series season. And now we're going to head on to the final major story in today's episode as we're talking about Honda. Now, I've been paying attention over the course of the last few months. There has been some talk and conversations about potentially another new manufacturer joining NASCAR. And Honda's name has been brought up in the conversations as of recently. And yesterday, Steve O'Donnell spoke to the media and he says that Honda remains in talks about the possibility of joining NASCAR. Per source, as Steve O'Donnell says, negotiations to add a fourth OEM are heating up currently at the moment. The other thing that's been going on is that Honda, if they don't get the hybrid situation figured out over IndyCar, that Honda could in fact leave IndyCar at the end of 2026, 
which could hurt IndyCar in a massive and a huge way. It might kill IndyCar as we know it if Honda is to leave. They could leave to go to NASCAR perhaps, or they could leave to go over to Formula One and focus on working with Aston Martin because remember, Aston Martin is going to be working with, with Honda in 2026 with the new regulations that are going to be coming into play. This is huge if Honda does leave IndyCar, but going back and talking about Honda, this is the first time, about the second time now, that Honda has been mentioned about joining NASCAR. There's been a lot of talk about them over the last couple of years about them potentially, in fact, making a jump over to the sport. But they've just been rumors. But now, especially with the talk of that hydrogen stuff coming into play, I think that is a massive and key reason why there are legitimate talks and conversations about Honda joining NASCAR is because a lot of talk about some of the hybrid stuff coming into play. And NASCAR has been in talks of developing a hybrid engine. One of the ultimate goals of this next-gen car has been to bring a new manufacturer into the sport. And there has not been a new manufacturer in NASCAR since 2004 when it was announced that Toyota was going to be going to the truck series. So it's been 20 years since the manufacturer has joined the sport. But now we are hearing that Honda may join I think that they're, do I think that they are going to join? I think that especially with the reports coming out now, I think it's very likely and a very strong possibility that it is in fact going to end up happening where a, a manufacturer like Honda comes in. We got close to having Dodge coming into sport. They were in heavy conversations at RFK, but unfortunately that deal sadly fell through. Now, the other big question to kind of ask is what teams could go over to Honda or join NASCAR and work with Honda? The first organization that I could see going and working with Honda is Spire Motorsports. Now, why do I mention Spire Motorsports? Considering Spire Motorsports had a long-term technical alliance with Chevy. Well, Spire Motorsports does have a big key partner that's working with them. Gamebridge and Group 1001. They have a co-owner, Dan Towns. Dan Towns is a co-owner of Andretti. Andretti has a big partnership and has had a long-term partnership since around 2014 and 2015 with, uh, with Honda in IndyCar. And I've been theorizing that Andretti is going to have a massive investment in the not-so-distant future working with, Indy, with them. So I believe that Andretti may find their way fully in Marco. Andretti may start with them as well as Spire. So I think that could be the key move where eventually Spire gets bought up by Andretti and Andretti comes in and brings Honda into the sport. We know that Michael Andretti is interested in going to NASCAR and we know that they're getting invested pretty heavily. The other team is Stuart Haas Racing. Stuart Haas Racing's involvement with Ford could end at the end of this year. I talked about the reports that Front Row Motorsports might become a top-tier team. I'm thinking Stuart Haas Racing may drop off the pecking order if that does take place. Stuart Haas Racing needs a new refresh going next year. There was talks of Dodge coming back in. We know that Tony Stewart has had conversations with Dodge. But obviously, of course, Front Row Motors, not Front Row, uh, Stuart Haas Racing, I think, could be a team that switches over to Honda, which I think would be really huge if they did, in fact, switch to Honda because they could start fresh. They've got drivers that are under contract with Ford, but I do believe that Stuart Haas switch, they could have a new fresh start. They need to make some big movement over over there and they still don't have their deal manufacturer deal done for 2024 and finally the last big key team that i could see coming back into the sport is chip ganassi racing chip ganassi last year on april had kind of suggested to dale jr that he is not out of the question of coming back into sport chip ganassi racing has not been involved in nascar since the 2021 season when they sold their charters off the track house racing and justin marks who of course had driven for chip ganassi in the nascar xfinity series back in 2018 and 2016 of course won a race for them in 2016 so he sold off his charters to justin marks and basically sold off his cup operation so i believe that chip ganassi if Dave Honda does come in, because he's had a long-term commitment with Honda for the last six or seven years in IndyCar, I do believe, and also does have a commitment with Cadillac, of course, but I think that Chip Ganassi could be the other key team that makes the jump in. I really hope Honda comes into the sport because, one, if there's a new manufacturer that comes in, that is one of the big number one successes of the next-gen car. Because like I've already mentioned, one of the big key things that will be huge success for the next-gen car is is if a new manufacturer does 1,000%, in fact, does make a jump in. I really hope it does end up happening, of course, that we do see a manufacturer, branding like Honda, make a jump into the sport. Because like I said, if they do, in fact, come into NASCAR, 
I think it will be absolutely huge and massive growth for the sport in a massive and huge way. So we'll see how things go through and how the negotiations go through, but it sounds like Honda comes in. You look at some of the organizations too, like Chip Ganassi, they get someone like a Matt the Benedetto or Brett Moffat perhaps to work with them. So we'll see how things go through, but it sounds like Honda has had some talks, conversations about joining NASCAR. So, that is good for today's NASCAR news and motorsports news video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Notifications on soon if I win a video, does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Let's go to below with that and comment your thoughts below on today's episode. What are your thoughts about Honda potentially coming to NASCAR? Let me your thoughts in the comments below. And what are your thoughts about some of the organizations like Front Row potentially becoming a Tier 1 team and other news we talk about today? Let me your thoughts in the comments below. Later tonight on the channel, we'll have reviews of the dual races. Tomorrow, they'll be in their NASCAR news video, discussing news over the course of the last couple days. Then on Saturday, and of course, Truck Series race will be tomorrow. Then Saturday, we'll have the Xfinity Series race review if the weather holds up. And then Sunday, we'll have the NASCAR Cup Series race review for the Daytona 500 if the weather holds up. Got a lot of great content still dropping on the channel that I cannot wait for you guys to check out. So anyways, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for more great awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.